Islam at a glass is brought to you by Wholesale Building Supply Tamirati Shobay Me Mayari Material Me Kabil Aitabar Naam Hafte Ke Saato Din New York Ke Pancho Boros Me Quick Delivery Wholesale Building Supply Ka Daba Kiemat Kam Quality Aala Phone Number 718-871-4500 890 Coney Island Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi ahda wa salatu wa salamu malla nabiya ba'da. Dear viewers, today we have a very vast topic at our hand so it's going to be difficult to keep it within the time limits but we will try to do the justice with the topic the topic is, is Islam assertive secularism and democracy actually uh, when we talk about secularism or even democracy there are so many models available in contemporary world of today that we are living in. If you go back to various uh, models, variations which are present in, uh, in our world and look into the history of any particular region, any particular country, you will know what is today available to, to, do, to you in the form of secularism and what are uh, the, the strings that are attached to it from the history. But we, not, we are not going to do that because it's, as I said, it's a too vast subject for a small time. Uh, Islam, on the other hand, uh, the problem here is that we always have to refer back to history because today, unfortunately, a real Islamic model of a society is hardly available. You see glimpses here and there, but in total, the working system of Islam has been absent from the face of the world for some time. There has been, uh, you know, struggle to establish such systems in parts of the world, and there are some successes as well. And then we will we will also cover that why they are they are not successful. Some of the reasons um, are connected with these topics, uh, secularism and democracy, as we use the term assertive secularism. So it is very assertive. Uh, so as I said that we have to uh, just, uh, just confine ourselves somehow by reducing these number of models to, to uh, let's say, uh, referring to a historian um, of English origin. His name was Thomas Toynbee. In his famous study of history, his famous book, he wrote that there are this, the Hellenic civilization, which has its roots in the Roman Empire, uh, exists today in the form of a Western civilization. So there are various models, but we are going to lump everything together in the, as they are all descendants of Hellenic civilization. And as compared to that, we will see the Islamic civilization, for which also he says that this is a civilization, it has continued since its inceptions in various ways, it goes down and it comes up and then it reestablishes itself. So it is one model versus the other one that we will compare mostly. Because this democracy and secularism, these are the terms and these are some things that are uh, the hallmark of this Western civilization that we see today and as being dominant over the, uh, over the face of the earth for quite some time now, this, when a civilization is dominant, it becomes fashion uh, of the nations even outside of the realm of those civilizations to follow them. It has happened with Islam also, that when Islam was at the time of its glory, people used to, to follow, even dressed like the Muslims uh, and uh, try to learn their language and go to their universities. And this, ha this is uh, now the case with the Western civilization, that it is dominant for some time. So now, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what is the reality? The reality is that uh, the Hellenic civilization of that, the Western civilization is a descendant, uh, and Islam, there are, are two 
two major differences that we need to consider before we go into uh, this debate. One is that uh, the Western civilization, which is linked with Hellenic civilization, is predominantly a Christian civilization. It is not named as such, but it has its roots in Christianity. It is true that that Christianity is much far from the real message that the Jesus brought to the humanity, which was not much different from the message of Islam, because it is from the same source. But it, over the years, over the time, it got various changes through the history, and according to the need, uh, the main, the major text words was even changed and uh, interpreted. Um, things were removed from the, the, the message and added to the message and altered and all that. So they adopted according to the need of the hour. Until today, it has been happening. But that is not the case with Islam. In, in the case of Islam, the text or the, the, the sources of Islamic knowledge, which is Quran and the Sunnah, that has been preserved over the 14 centuries. And it is true that outside of those two sources, that is uh, ijtihad, which is thinking of uh, the new situations that are arising, uh, to find solutions for new problems and new situations. On the basis of those basic sources, this has been the hallmark of the Muslim society, Islamic civilization. Uh, the other major difference that uh, is present in these, these two civilizations, I should say, is that uh, in the last few hundred years, I would say from the time of the Renaissance in Europe, uh, when the Dark Ages uh, ended and the Renaissance happened, during that process, uh, the, uh, the church, which was predominantly Catholic church, was, uh, was considered as a uh, as a impediment to progress they were the, the 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 people who were following that religion were not allowed to think in in, in uh, liberally i should say in the secular uh, areas they were not allowed not only the secular sciences or areas they were not allowed to think they were punished for that they were not even allowed to read the bible by themselves you have to have certain qualifications, certain skills with the language to, to learn what the Bible says. And that's how it just, it created kind of a conflict situation, a resistance against the, against the uh, religion or religious uh, uh, clergy, uh, which was actually collaborating with the kingdoms, with the uh, autocratic rulers of that times. So that, uh, uh, that is actually, uh, as I said, there are various exam examples within the Europe. If you look at France, if you look at another uh, country, or if you look at US, there are different histories of that. But we are just considering one for now, for the sake of simplicity. Otherwise, you have to go into detail and see what, why each culture today is behaving in the way they are behaving. Although they all call themselves secular democratic states. But we see, for example, in France, it is a secular democratic state in which in 2004 they passed a resolution that no Muslim woman or no Muslim girl is allowed to wear a scarf in a public school, although they call it a secular state. A secular state means everyone has the right to follow the religion of his choice or her choice. But that was not the case. In 2004 they changed. So what was the reason we will not be able to go into the, the history, but the, the thing is that what is current is available. Even in that, you see the dichotomy, the, the hypocrisy in the policies of the French government. On one hand, it says that there is no rule. The reason we are banning this scarf from the public school is that they don't want anybody to, in a public space, they don't want manifestation or uh, uh, of, of any particular religion, uh, religious feeling. So they just want uh, it to be away from the public space. But on the other hand, this is the same French government which is providing 80% of the funding for the Catholic schools. So now what is happening, the Muslim girls are not allowed to go to public school if they wear hijab. So what they are doing, they are going to the Catholic schools because there it is allowed. So this is 
completely uh, mockery of this term secularism or religious pluralism or even democracy. So th this, is, this is just one example that I give. If you go look at uh, other places in journal, you will see that they, although they said that we have, uh, because of their hatred, they separated the religion from the state, but they were not, uh, they, they said that we are secular, but they always, time and again, came back to religion and used the religion for, for example, for keeping the nation united keeping a, a, a kind of a, a, a group, a, keeping them in, in a unity and thinking of the others as, as not like them. So it is again a mockery of this whole concept. If you look at America, for example, in the beginning, the First Amendment that we all cherish that this is uh, uh, about the rights and the, about the liberty and uh, about the religious freedom that everybody has the right to uh, express or, or uh, their, their, their religious way they want to follow. But actually the situation there was that there were different denominations of Christianity that were established in the U.S. at the time of their independence, at the time of First uh, amendment. So that was actually to bring about a kind of a uh, pacify them or making them into a nation that suited for, for that time. But when, and even at that time, it was this secularism, the fruit of, fruits of this secular, uh, secularism were not available to, for example, the ethnic uh, min minorities or this diverse uh, diversity that has existed. It was, as I said, that it has a, 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 an angle of Christianity, an angle of uh, uh, being a particular race to it, which we, we, which we uh, beautify it by saying there is secularism and, 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 and democracy and all that. And we come to the democracy that how it has become a mockery again. Um, but as I said, on the, on the other hand, the, the, in Islamic civilization, for some times we don't have an ideal model, so unfortunately we cannot compare uh, what, what is uh, for, for the contemporary world. But one example we should see, it's a very interesting example, that is in the, in, 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 uh, the example of Turkey. Turkey was the uh, country which was influenced by these ideas in the Islamic world. It was Ottoman Empire. It was even before the revolution of Ataturk. It was in the Ottoman times that they started adopting this Western uh, ideologies of secularism and, uh, and, and, and try to uh, you know, mix it with Islam. Islam never left Turkey, but they started mixing those ideas and then come up with the, you know, they later on, they, after Ataturk, it become more harder and then they started taking the full system. For example, they took the, they removed the Sharia part of the, uh, the, the family law uh, or the civil law and they brought the laws, the exact law system of Switzerland to Turkey. So they, they imported that. What they, they were trying to do, they were trying to be part of Europe. And they, they were told that you have to, you know, in the later part, they were told to, to do this and you, will, you have to introduce democratic system, you have to do this. And they did all that. And after that, if you see lately, what happened is that it's democracy. It is democracy, but when the democracy is allowed in a Muslim nation, the people who were, so to say, Islamist or have little inclination towards Islam, they won the elections, but that is not acceptable to the to 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 the to the uh, you know uh, promoters of secularism and democracy. They say democracy we want, but without Islam. So I always remember that ayah in which uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say, "Walan tattabul yahuda wan walan walan nasara." Don't follow the Yahud and Nasara. It's just an example of Yahud and Nasara. In fact, anybody outside of Islam, you should not follow. Otherwise, you say they will not be uh, content with, except if you accept their ways of life. 
their ways of life can be a secularism or can be a democracy or whatever with, with all their, their problems. If you accept it, they are happy. If you don't, they will not. This just, Yahud and Nasara is just an example, but that's what's going to happen. But what, what should be the response of Muslim? Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. To all the people who deny Islam, kafirun outside, including the, uh, and also the uh, Ahl Kitab, which was explained in the previous verse that I just uh, gave you the translation of. In the end, the last word, the last word of this the verse of this ayah says, "Lakum dinukum waliyadin." For you is your way, and for us is our way. This is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. So, our our you know there, the, the other I, in this in the beginning I wanted to say the other difference that we have with Christianity or with the Hellenic civilization in Islam. The Hellenic civilization, as I said, that they develop a hatred about religion. So they want to keep their state away out of the, uh, you know, uh, secular uh, system is, uh, is like uh, uh, an alternative to religion. But it, for us, our experience, whenever we came to glory and we were uh, uh, in a very good position in the world, we were ruling the world, that was the time when we were very much uh, following our religion, following our traditions in our universities and our schools of very high repute, the first year used to be the year to learn ethics. And that ethics was based on Quran and Sunnah. And after that, you learn medicine, you learn geography, you learn mathematics, and you learn physics, and you produce the best scientists and best people in all areas of secular sciences and, and social sciences and all other areas. So Islam, our experience, as I said, is, is not bad with the religion. So we prosper when we, our grain is like that, that we prosper when we are with the religion. If we are going to leave that nature of ours, which goes very well with our religion, our tradition and try to adapt something that is the experience of some people. It may help them, but it may not be helpful for us. It didn't happen. We it, it tried adopting this for last century or so, but we are, we are nowhere. As far we are going from Islam, that far we are going from prosperity. That is the equation. That's the correct situation. So we need to think about it. But as far as being secular, Islam does not tell you to be just, uh, you know, just to yourself and don't allow the others to do what they, they, their rights are. It is very secular religion in all aspects. You see from the very first state of Medina that Prophet Muhammad established in which the Jews and the Christians and the Kuf and the Mushrikeen, the people, adult worshippers, they were all there and they made a pact and they stayed in under the authority of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in that state. And since then, always Muslims and the Islamic nation was available as a refuge for people who were being persecuted in other parts of the world. For example, Jews used to find the refuge and shelter where? In the Ottoman Empire, in the Muslim states. So they were always ready to help the people around the world and they are really secular in nature. Although we, even at the times when we were going away from our Islamic tradition, we kept this tradition of helping people and accommodating them. On the other hand, on the face of it, it looks very nice, secularism and all that. But the President of the United States it says, no, Islam is, is completely against us. And then it, he was, it, is, it is there to harm us. And then he was again asked in a, in, a, in, a, in a TV interview that you want to reconsider your statement. He said no. So they were adamant. They want to use their religion when it becomes useful for them to unite the nation for, or to get the votes in democracy. And uh, in, in the end, just talking a little bit about democracy, as I said, that it has become a mockery also because this system of governance is the most corrupt system of the world, even corrupt than the autocratic system, even corrupt than the dictatorial system today. Because number one, the use of money, the use of power to buy the votes. Just remember 
were the at the time when in the in the in, in the in Greece where this philosophy the democracy idea of democracy started uh, coming up uh, Socrates was what he wrote in his letters about democracy and he said that uh, uh, he, uh, he the le in the letter he wrote that if you are in a ship and you want uh, who you want to be in charge of the ship or captain of the ship definitely the person who is capable who know how to steer the ship ship you don't want anybody to be a leader of the ship so what he was saying is that in in democracy it is possible to to get anybody to to to, to be your leader which is not a good way he said that the people must be trained to be democratic or to be participant in this in this process whether they are to be chosen as leader or even if they are voters they have to be trained this is a great philosophy in fact the islamic shura system is closer to what he is saying that not everybody but the people of knowledge people of character there has to be some some uh, uh, some attributes some some uh, some things is special it's not for the common man, if it is give, if it will be given to the common man, then it will the the whole system will be, be corrupted. But what when we say that in Islamic world, we are uh, in a situation that we we don't have an Islamic model established. But so in that situation, when uh, and also the dominance of the West and democratic uh, system and all that, if this demo, these democracies are available in certain parts, in other areas. There is autocratic system. There is, you know, uh, uh, harsh treatment of the of the rulers and no no rights and all that. That is not a something that is a a, a good situation. It's a better situation in some countries, and it is the number is growing in Islamic countries are those where some kind of democracy is there. What we need to do is we need to work from there and reform that system. To uh, what I say, Islamize that system, because the 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 idea of shura or consultation is there in Islam, but it is more. It has to be in in in, in the in the context of what I refer to from from uh, Socrates, that uh, the, the, this has to be uh, a a system in which the people of knowledge and they have to be taught how to be how to how to use their vote, for example, or how to lead the people. Having said that, we will end by saying that in Islam, the, there is a space for being secular, there is a space for democracy, but these systems have to be uh, adopted according to the, uh, the, the norms of what I, I in the beginning said that we have two sources, Quran and Sunnah. You will, can go and find the references. Sharia. Sharia is, a, is just a, 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 a limited thing. Islam is much more than Sharia. Islam, uh, the, uh, Sharia, uh, is, going to, is not going to govern everything. There is a lot of area in which ishtihad and qiyas and all that can happen. You know, you can make your laws, you can be as secular as possible outside of that as long as you are not opposing Quran and Sunnah, as long as you are not opposing Sharia. For example, defining the traffic laws, speed limits, licensing, all that. This is not, Sharia is not telling you to do that. Even the political system, it doesn't compel you to be like A, B, C, D, you have to do that. Even the Khulfa al-Rashidin in the earlier part of Islamic history, all of them were, uh, came to power, became Amir with a different system. So it allowed and it allows the Muslims to adopt certain systems, secular system, learn secular knowledge, but with the references that we have with us. Islam at a glass was brought to you by Wholesale Building Supply Tamirati Shobe Mayari Material Me Kabil Etabar Naam Hafte Ke Saato Din 
न्यूयॉर्क के पांचों बोरोस में क्विक डिलीवरी होलसेल बिल्डिंग सप्लाई का दावा कीमत कम क्वालिटी आला फोन नंबर सेवन वन एट एट सेवन वन फोर फाइव जीरो जीरो एट नाइन जीरो कोनी आईलैंड एवेन्यू ब्रुकलिन न्यूयॉर्क 